Cutter is a starter ship of Star Citizen. Released in version 3.17 in 2022, the Cutter marks Drake Interplanetary's entry into the size 2 starter ship market, seemingly replicating the same formula of ruggedness and versatility of the Cutter's Black, but in a smaller package. But does the Cutter have the numbers to replicate the success of its big sister? And more importantly, is it really the starter that new players need? Hi, I'm Joru5. In this video, I will tell you what I like, what I don't like, my final verdict, and what I will do to improve the Drake Cutter. If you're not familiar with the concept of starter ships, let me provide a brief explanation. The term starter originates from starter packs, which are game packs that grant access to the Star Citizen universe. These packs usually include at least one ship along with other benefits. So technically any ship included in a starter pack could be considered a starter. In practice, however, a ship like the 890 Jump is unlikely to be called a starter even if it is included in a starter pack. This distinction is made because the term starter is generally used to describe ships that, in addition to being included in a starter pack meet the following criteria. Affordable price, not exceeding size 3, versatility and balanced performance. Which means that starter ships are designed to serve as a stepping stone for new players to explore different gameplay mechanics and become familiar with the game. Currently, the vessels that are properly considered starter ships are the Mustang Alpha, the Aurora, the C8 X Pisces, the Cutter, the 100 i the Titan, the Nomad, the Cutlass Black, and the Freelancer. The Cutter is Drake's offer for a size 2 starter, and it's time to find out what I like. Easy to fly. Despite its appearance, the Cutter has decent maneuverability, it is a smooth and predictable ship that performs reasonably well in all conditions, so much so that it can be sleep-induced at times. Its retro thrusters, however, are not very powerful, so approaching station at full speed is not recommended and can cause clumsy pilot to crash on the landing pad. Robust being a clumsy pilot who often crashes on the landing pad isn't a big problem with the cutter, since it's the sturdy ship. In fact, the hull strength is comparable to the cutter's black, which is a tough ship even a size larger. However, since the cutter only has a size 1 shield and is not particularly fast, this resistance is more of a balance than a real advantage in a combat scenario. Aesthetics the cutter may lack the elegance of an origin ship and the bold aggressive geometry is commonly found in Drake ships. With its hulking container-like appearance, the cutter prioritizes utilitarian functionality over notions of beauty and aerodynamics, looking more like an old country van than a sleek vessel. But this is kind of cool, because it gives the cutter a distinctive charm, and having such a clumsy yet endearing appearance, the cutter rarely draws hostile attention from other players. In other words, it is a sort of free pass to be left undisturbed. Land Vehicle the Cutter is the cheapest starter ship to date that can carry a land vehicle. Before the Cutter, the cheapest ship with this capability was the Titan. However, the EG ship can only carry a small PTV, which, while sufficient to reach enemy bunkers, is quite fragile, performs poorly rough terrain and has very limited inventory space. Instead, the Cutter has enough room to accommodate a roaring STV, which is the smallest land vehicle to be suitable for moving through the wilderness of Stanton. Accommodation to be called such, proper ship's accommodations must have at least bed, toilet, sink and shower. Surprisingly, with the exception of the cutter and freelancer, none of the starters have proper accommodations. The Mustang Alpha and C8 pieces have seats only, while the 100i, the Aurora, Titan and Cutlass Black have beds but no bath, and the Nomad has no shower. This makes the cutter the only starter ships, beside the Freelancer, that offers decent accommodations, in addition to being one of the cheapest. Details the cutter is full of details that, despite not having any gameplay functionality, give a good immersive experience. The exterior is full of little lights that make the cutter look like a long haul truck, 
while the interior is full of structural details and nice little touches like the two small windows on either side of the cargo hatch that offer a sneak peek of the surroundings prior to opening. You can also extend shields over the side windows of the cockpit, which has no practical purpose as far as I know, but gives the ships a touch of role-playing that I personally appreciate. Gold Standard Gold standard means that the current version of the ship meets the requirement for gameplay features that are either currently available in the game or planned for the near future. For example, the cutter has player-accessible physicalized components that are critical to the salvage gameplay and will be used in the upcoming repair and maintenance system. For those interested in learning more, I will include a link in the description to an excellent video that explains very well what the gold standard is. The cutter is the only starter ship available today that can be seen as meeting the gold standard, or at least comes closest to it. Fuel tanks The cutter has remarkably large fuel tanks, which are rumored to be downsized soon. Personally, I believe that even after the very likely downsizing, the cutter will have enough fuel to take advantage of the faster quantum drives, like the VK-00 and Beacon, without the need for intermediate stops on longer trips. And now, the things I don't like about the cutter. Slow Sure, the cutter is easy to fly, but that's mostly because of its low speed, especially when maneuvering in the dense ground level atmosphere, where top speed can drop to 150 meters per second. In space, the maximum speed of the cutter is average for ships of its size, but not so for acceleration, which is average for larger ships. In fact, its acceleration is closer to that of a constellation, which is a ship two sizes larger. Things don't get any better with the quantum drive, as the cutter in its default configuration mounts the Voxfire, one of the slowest quantum drives ever, making the upgrade a necessity. The issue of slowness should not be taken lightly, especially by players who want to maximize their playing time. Using the cutter for long periods becomes an exercise in zen patience. And that's a shame. With such large engines, one could easily justify higher speeds, especially in the atmosphere. This limitation penalizes the cutter in what I think would have been its ideal role, a very fast ship for smuggling goods, which is appropriate for Drake, just as the Herald is a very fast ship for smuggling data. The cutter could have been a kind of sleeper ship, masking its tremendous forward speed with a goofy look. Internal layout it may look small, but the cutter is a ship of considerable size. However, the design of its interior spaces leaves much to be desired, as it seems to defy common sense logic and results in a significant amount of wasted space. Despite being larger than the Titan, the cutter has a limited cargo capacity of only 4 SEUs, while the AG starter can carry 8 SEUs. The reason for this limitation is that the cutter has only one entrance to the cargo bay, requiring the inclusion of a passageway that limits the available cargo space. Also, from a role-playing perspective, having only one exit for the cargo bay could pose a safety hazard in situations involving the transport of hazardous materials. A second entrance to the cockpit would be ideal, since it is large enough to accommodate even a small personalization room. Another puzzling aspect is the orientation of the bathroom exit. Instead of facing the bed, it faces the cargo area, taking up valuable space that could have been used to increase cargo capacity or add features such as an exosuite compartment. With separate entrances and a more concentrated layout of living space, the cutter could have expanded the cargo area, potentially increasing its cargo capacity to 12 or even 18 SEUs which makes more sense given the actual size of the ship. STV The STV barely fits into the cutter. Once parked inside, one gets the distinct feeling that this possibility was not really planned, 
but rather a lucky coincidence. Getting out of the STV parked inside requires a combination of jumping and crouching that pricks the sense of immersion in the game. This is a shame, as the STV and Cutter were released very close to each other and one would expect a natural synergy between the two vehicles. Windows Unfortunately, the Cutter is one of several Star Citizen ships that lack any windows in the living quarters. It is astonishing to think of being denied the opportunity to enjoy a breathtaking view from your bed, especially when even a small porthole could alleviate feelings of confinement and claustrophobia. Sure, gameplay-wise, this is irrelevant, but in my opinion, a game like Star Citizen is all about immersion. Final verdict. Before we get to the final verdict, please subscribe and click like to support the creation of new videos. Thank you very much. The Cutter is a very distinctive starter ship for two reasons. It bears a striking resemblance to the cockpit section of the Caterpillar and it has qualities that, despite its starter designation, are more likely to appeal to veteran players than newcomers. Its slow movement, lackluster combat capabilities and an attractive appearance can make it a challenging choice for new players in the long run. In contrast, the Titan offers a more dynamic daily experience with its faster movement and ability to engage in more demanding combat encounters. For veterans, however, things are different, as they are more likely to be interested in the highly immersive experience that the Cutter can provide. But while I fully support ships that prioritize immersion, I also believe that a starter ship like the Cutter can be a significant challenge for new players, requiring a more deliberate, slow and cautious playstyle. For all these reasons, my final verdict on the Cutter is... 7 out of 10. The fact that the Cutter is, in my opinion, a starter that is not so suitable for new players did not affect the final score. After all, the look of the Cutter alone should be enough to warn of its potential weaknesses, especially when compared to its direct competitors in the same price range, the 100i, C8X and Titan, which have a slicker look. The greatest strength of the Cutter is its ability to provide an immersive and complete experience in an affordable package. It has decent accommodation and despite its modest cargo capacity of only 4 SEUs, it can carry land vehicles and a significant amount of salvage. What holds the Cutter back from a higher rating is the hastily designed interior that not only fails to make the most of the space available but is also uneven in quality. While areas such as the cockpit and exterior boast highly polished finishes, the living quarters look boxy and less refined in comparison. In conclusion, the Cutter is a ship with interesting features that despite its starter nature has managed to win the hearts of many veterans. But if you are a new player, I suggest you think twice before choosing the Cutter as your first ship. If you can afford to spend a little more, a Titan or a Nomad are ships that can offer more possibilities. In the next episode, the Nomad. Can you guess what I like and what I don't? Until next time, see you in the verse.